And how could you resist with music like that? But Puerto Rico's tourist industry is vulnerable. I asked travel expert Mark Murphy how authorities there can overcome fears over Zika. The Caribbean is probably the best at mosquito uh, mitigation as it is, right? So they've dealt with mosquitoes and they've dealt with this for years. So they've got treatment programs, they're spraying, they're doing all the things. So the chances are you're not going to be affected. But then you take the extra precaution, you wear a DEET uh, mosquito repellent, you make sure you're sensible uh, at those hours when mosquitoes are more active, you just stay inside. Uh, other than that, there's not much else you can do. And the reality is 80% of the people that get bit and get infected, never even know they're infected, and only 20% know they're infected, and it lasts for a day or two days max. So for, a, a, as a whole, it's not really something to be that concerned about. The only thing is this, this connection they're trying to make with pregnancy and this microencephaly, and they still don't know if it's definitely attributed to the virus. They believe it is. So I would just say, listen, if you're in that, in that mode, use extra caution and don't travel to those regions. But for everybody else, what's happening is they're discounting prices, you're getting a much better deal. So for those who want to travel and love the Caribbean and aren't concerned about it, then I encourage them to go and they're actually going to save a lot on their trip. I mean, to be frank, they're going to save money as a result of this and have a great vacation. Now, Mark, another country that a lot of people are now turning to is Cuba. It's been about a year since the U.S. and Cuba restored diplomatic mm -hmm. relations. So with that being said, how has that impacted the number of visitors who are already going to the country? Well, you know what's kind of funny? Like, as Americans, we're thinking, oh, my God, Cuba's open. Cuba's been open for the rest of the world. It's been a huge tourism destination. Over a million Canadians travel there every year. Their numbers are up this year, but so are American travelers. Uh, but we still are dwarfed by just the Canadians who represent about half of all travel to Cuba with well, about 1.3 million travelers. So let's say last year 150,000 Americans went. Maybe this year we'll see two to 250,000, but it's still tiny relative to the Cuba market because there's still plenty of restrictions in place and for Americans traveling to Cuba it is a really expensive trip versus going to any other Caribbean destination but Cuba's unique and I just got back from Cuba a month ago I absolutely loved it and I want to go back again but they've got to make some significant investment in their infrastructure if they're going to be able to handle any kind of increase in travel and that's going to be their Achilles heel for the foreseeable future the big story for the last two weeks or so has been the whole brexit story something that you know obviously a lot of people didn't see coming. So how do you expect political uncertainty in the UK to affect tourism in that region? It's going to be a boom, boom for tourism in the UK. I mean, when the dollar gains against the pound and when the euro gains against the pound, it makes inbound tourism to the UK incredibly attractive. So you're getting a 20 to 25 percent discount on travel to the UK now. I'm projecting that that value of the pound is going to drop much further in the next six to 12 months. It's going to get cheaper and cheaper to go there. Basically, go there and do your shopping at Harrods. Go there and stay in hotels for 30, 40, 50 percent cheaper than it would have cost you a year or two ago. Looking ahead, in terms of some of these emerging trends, something that you're seeing people mm -hmm. really gravitating towards, and let's actually start with our Chinese tourists who clearly spend a lot yeah. of money, very interested in travel. What are you seeing them interested in? Well, you know what? The cruise industry is positioning ships in China, and they're building ships specifically for the Chinese market. And we're talking these mega ships, you know, billions of dollars worth of investment, and they're building it just for that market. That's how big that market is, and it's only going to grow and get more and more important. And you're going to find that more and more countries are basically actively engaging the Chinese traveler to bring the Chinese traveler. You've got basically the equivalent of the millennials, which is 110 million in the U.S., which is around about the same in China that's traveling right now and going outside the border. That market is going to continue to grow and everybody's going to want to tap that market. So I expect a continued boom in outbound uh, travelers from China and I expect more and more infrastructure going in to address the uh, cruise market and other products that the Chinese tourists are all over right now and want to experience because they've seen it on TV, they've watched it, they want to live that life and the companies are taking big advantage of it by creating the product specifically for them.